So pneumothorax, which we see fairly commonly in the ED, but what can they test us on when it comes to this? So there are three main types. There's the simple, the tension, and the open. The simple is just air in the thorax, and this can be caused by all sorts of different things. Uh, it can be caused maybe by uh, smoking, bongs are a particular problem, by taking those deep breaths with the hot air, all sorts of causes of neurothorax. Certainly there's traumatic as well, or people are just, you know, that, that tall predilection for a spontaneous pneumo. Tension is gonna be when they have a hemodynamic instability because that uh, pleural space has filled so much with air that's not escaping. It's pushing up against that lung in the mediastinidal uh, space. And that is then reducing the ability to get preload and, and create perfusion for the body. An open pneumothorax is connecting with the outside and you'll have a flap there. In terms of the presentation, they're gonna have surprise, chest pain, and some shortness of breath. So here we have a right-sided neurothorax, quite large, and you can see on the screen's left, if you're looking at it on the patient's side, so the opposite side of that uh, large pneumo we're seeing on uh, the right neurothorax there, you'll also see a whole lot of air in the fascial planes on the other x-ray. Now you can also use ultrasound, and so you'll see where there's lungs sliding, you have that nice sandy beach, and then the barcode is consistent with a pneumo. So the management is a tube thoracostomy, and you can have the large bore versus small bore, oftentimes a pigtail right at the top of that second intercostal space is a good way to go. If it's a particularly small pneumothorax, you can try applying 100% oxygen and then do a repeat film in a few hours and see where they're going. Not all of them require tube thoracostomy. Certainly if you have a, uh, some sort of tension pneumothorax, then you need to use a needle thoracostomy and pop that as soon as possible and then follow it with a more definitive tube thoracostomy. And here we see an example of a well-placed chest tube. You can see that it is entering in the triangle of safety and going up into the superior aspect of the lung, but it's not in the lung fissure. And you could easily twist this if you wanted to. So it is, the tip of it is placed in the apex of the lung, perfectly positioned to uh, be able to pull on the air that it has preference for going to the top of the lung, a very well-placed chest tube. And that concludes the thoracic chapter. Go test your knowledge with some questions. It's a great opportunity to go see all of them, and we'll see you on the next one.